sorry guys. Okay, so here's where we are. I did put this on um, our VHL so you can see your textbook. You don't have to physically have your textbook. You can see it here, but I just wanna show you what lesson we're at and how it's gonna look. Um, so we're doing indirect object pronouns. Basically, all that means is it is a going to replace the indirect object noun, okay? Um, it's gonna express like to whom um, or for whom an action is done. So like in this one it says, Claire speaks to her mother. So this little clue here, this ah, it's gonna be really important. And now I'm gonna tell you, and I'll put this in the notes too, sometimes that ah is hidden. It might be hidden as part of like AU or AUX, right? So sometimes we, we have that kind of hidden throughout there, or sometimes it's gonna be just like this, where it'll be ah, sa mer. Okay, and you're like, oh, there's my signal that I'm going to be using indirect object pronoun to replace it. All right, that's how we know. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna try my best to hold this and do this. I tried to have Katie do it. it. No, it didn't work out so good with the last class, so I'll I'm just do, gonna, I'll do, I'll do. I'm good. Okay, so indirect object pronouns, okay? It's a pronoun, so that means it's going to replace. Okay, it's going to replace um, the actual indirect object noun. Okay, so our normal pronouns, like if we talk about subject pronouns, right? We have je and tu, il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, elle. Um, for indirect object pronouns, we do have some that are going to now be a little different, okay? So remember, this is replacing an indirect object, so they won't be our subject pronouns. But they do work kind of like that, where you're, they're taking the place of that um, indirect object, just like our pronouns, our subject pronouns took the place of that subject noun, right? Okay, so for example, one is m. and Katie thought that one was funny because she said that looks like an English word to her, and it does, it's pronounced m. Um, and that's going to basically mean, I'll zoom down, um, to or for me. And then we have t, which will be to or for you, and then we have lui, which is to or for, and it can be to or for him or her, okay? So this one's nice. There's not gonna be two different ways to say to him or to her. There's not two different ways. It'll be lui. It doesn't matter if it's, um, if it's a him or if it's a her, okay? It'll just be lui all the time, okay? So that's kind of nice. Then we have new, Oops, sorry guys, which means to or for us. And we have vu, which is to or for you. Okay, remember you guys should know, right? This is familiar, okay? And this is formal, okay? People you don't know, strangers, people with authority, right? Um, le, is to or for them. All right. All right. So, like I said, they are just going to replace your indirect objects. They are pronouns that are replacing it. Um, so, let me see if I can come up with it. I should have done this one ahead of time. Um, let's see. I'm going to, sh let's say, um, what if I did. Um, she asks a question to, uh, what could we do? Son frère, to her brother. Okay. A posing question of son frère. So what we are going to be doing is instead of saying she asks a question to her brother, this right here is our indirect object, okay? This ah signals to you that's an indirect object, okay? So you know now that we're gonna be using one of these to replace it, okay? Son frère, okay? Well, is it me, you, him or her, us, you, or them? Katie, brother, which would it be? Me, you, him or her, us, you or them? Um, which one sounds, which one could I replace with brother? Them. 
Well, you have she has two brothers. Yeah. But if you have only one brother, he, he good. So a nine year old just figured it out, guys. You can figure this out. So lui. So we are just going to replace this with lui. Okay. Um, now the other thing is that it's usually going to come before the conjugated verb. Okay. So instead of it staying over here on the end of the sentence, okay, it's going to go el. Lui pose in question. So it's actually going to move, okay? So that's the other tricky part that I just wanted to make sure you were aware of is that this indirect object pronoun, when we do replace it, it's actually going to move, okay? It's actually going to move, all right? So this is now my indirect object pronoun. That's what we actually moved. It's going in front of the conjugated verb. So that's going to happen a lot. Um, even when the conjugated verb, for example, was like in the past, right? Um, so the conjugated verb might change. Or if it's in the, the press future, okay, your conjugated verb um, might change a little bit too, right? So it's going to go in front of whatever verb was conjugated, okay? It's, it's whatever verb was really conjugated, basically. Um, if there is a negative, this is another thing that I caught on the video that I thought, oh, that might be a good idea to talk about. So if it's negative, you're going to have your ne, and then you're going to have your indirect object pronoun. And then you're going to have your conjugated verb. And then you get to have your pa. Okay? So I'm going to lift it up a little bit so you can see better. So this one does get a little bit more, I mean, it looks like a lot, but that's just because I had to write indirect object pronoun that's pretty long. Okay? But if it was negative, okay, um, your indirect object pronoun is going to go in between your ne, and then it'll go before your conjugative verb. Okay? Before this conjugative verb, and then pa comes after. Okay? So, like, if I wanted to say the same sentence, actually, let's just do this one. Elle lui pose une question. What if I say that she, she doesn't ask them a question or him a question, right? So, we could just say, elle ne lui, right? A conjugative verb pose. Pas une question. Okay, so it's not that bad. It's just saying that the ne and the pa is basically going to sandwich this lui and bo together. Okay, so it's going to just kind of sandwich it. No big deal. Um, there is another trick that I want to make sure I just talk to you guys about is that when an infinitive follows the conjugated verb. Oops. I'm writing and looking and filming. Okay. Conjugated verb. Um, the in direct abject pronoun goes before the infinitive. Okay, so sometimes we'll go before the infinitive. Um, I believe, let me just bring it back over here. I think your book gave you a couple examples of those. Okay, so here's a verb that's conjugated. So you would want to maybe usually think, oh, that I put lui in front of it. But no, because it's nous allons lui donner. You're, you're not um, going to him. You're giving to him the tie. You're right. You're giving him the tie. This is the verb we're actually talking about. So it's actually the infinitive that is getting this indirect object. Okay? So that's why the lui will go there. Same thing here. Is a spare lui prêter le caston. So they hope to lend you the suit. They aren't hoping to you. They're hoping to lend you the suit. So they're, they're, this is the verb that's actually getting that indirect object 
object. Okay, that's the one that is going to get the indirect object. That's where it's happening. Okay, so it will actually go in front of the um, the in um, sorry the infinitive. Remember, infinitives usually end in er. They could end in ir. Um, could end in re. There are infinitive forms of the verbs. The verbs that are not conjugated yet. All right. The only other little thing is they do review a little bit with you the disjunctive pronouns. So I'm just going to make the list down real quick for you. We've done these in the past, so this shouldn't be a big deal, but disjunctive pronouns are things like moi, toi, lui, elle, nous, vous, eux, and elle. Okay? Now, these you can use alone, which some of you have done this before. Okay? If I ask you a question, you guys will say moi, okay, me, right? You can use them by themselves, right? Um, or you can use them for emphasis, emphasis right? So, like, if you're, um, you're asking if, you know, um, if I'm asking one of my kids, okay, hey, I need you to take out the garbage. Me? Take out the garbage? Like, you know, are you sure? Like, this is going to happen? But emphasis. You can use it for emphasis, too. So, can be used alone or for emphasis. I don't know how to spell this. I think that's how we spell it in English. Okay. All right. So anyhow, here is our brief notes for you guys. I know it's longer than I maybe planned on it being today, but I miss you. I hope you miss me a little bit. Um, but we will see each other again. I'm going to figure out something, especially for your class. Um, but more info on that coming on later in the year. But um, so we're just going to make the best of it. Thank you for those of you who have been doing your work. I've seen many of you who have been doing your work. Um, I know our superintendent just sent out a, uh, uh, a message, a video message. Make sure you and your family watch that for some more details about what's expected of you during this time um, and what we hope for you during this time. So anyhow, take care. Love you guys. I will see you soon. Bye. Bonjour.